Biogeography is the science of where species live and why, and it's an incredibly important area of modern biology, helping us to understand things from speciation to invasive species to conservation management. But ideas from biogeography are still quite patchily applied in medicine, and more rarely still for global health management. In our recent ecography review, we take a closer look at the theory and application of biogeography to the research and management of human infectious diseases, an integration that we call pathogeography for short. Many ideas from biogeography have already helped scientists better map some of the world's most devastating diseases, like malaria, dengue, and Ebola. But there's much more to it than just disease mapping. When we look at the world's diseases through a biogeographic lens, all at the same time, we find some larger scale, more fundamental patterns. For example, by looking at global patterns of where diseases occur, we can see that human pathogens follow similar ecological patterns as other biological groups, like more pathogen diversity and turnover in the tropics, and larger range sizes at higher latitudes. We can also see which regions are particularly rich in human pathogens, what we might call pathodiversity hotspots. And by looking at which diseases frequently occur together, we can see which places share similar disease risks. From this, we can define entire pathogeographic realms like Neotropical or Australasian, much like Alfred Wallace did for animals more than 150 years ago. In fact, pathogeographic and zoogeographic patterns look surprisingly similar, and it turns out that the best predictor we have of global human infectious disease diversity is global wildlife biodiversity, which makes a fair bit of sense. After all, most human infectious diseases have animal reservoirs or vectors as part of their transmission cycles. This makes for interesting science, but how do we make this useful? To help reduce the burden of infectious diseases, we need to better understand when and where diseases are likely to occur and why. But we currently know less about the precise distribution of most human infectious diseases than we do about butterflies, birds, or even bluebells. In such data-poor situations, using and integrating existing data on disease or wildlife distributions and community assemblage patterns could really help. Biogeographic approaches encourage us to take a whole system's perspective on human infectious diseases and helps us define some basic expectations about which pathogens and diseases should be occurring where and why. This in turn could help us prepare for disease invasions or inform us where to do disease surveillance more efficiently. Ideas from biogeography could even help us to anticipate hotspots for disease emergence, like the next outbreak of MERS, Ebola, or maybe something completely new. We conclude that we are only just beginning to scratch the surface of what biogeography can contribute to human infectious disease research encouraging community ecologists and biogeographers to work more closely with health professionals and vice versa could really help us improve our understanding of infectious disease systems, which could lead to novel management strategies to improve local, global and planetary health.